Hear me now. Is it working? We good now? Okay, cool, cool. I accidentally unmuted the wrong one. I think we got it now. Cool, sorry. Yeah, you guys probably just saw me a, a bobblehead up here just rambling away. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, sorry about that. I was trying to get my alarm to shut off before I started the show so you guys didn't hear beeping the whole time. I couldn't figure out why it kept going off and then uh, when I looked there was like something moving around on it and uh, I went back there and it was a darn spider trying to build a web on the camera so it kept setting off my motion detector. Anyhow, so we got that taken care of. Alright, and the sound's working. Awesome. Cool. Good deal. Alright. So happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. And uh, yeah, we're going to do some talking about airplanes. Jet Jam's coming up. Uh, hopefully a lot of you guys were able to get out and fly this weekend. Uh, I wanted to go out today and then actually didn't end up making it out, unfortunately. And still got here kind of late. Um, one of our good buddy uh, buddies, Adam, Adam C. Um, you guys, I'm sure, have seen him on some of our videos and stuff like that. Uh, he just got a trailer, and we're trying to get it dialed in for Jet Jam coming up uh, here in the next week or so. Uh, so we were building some shelves and stuff today, and it's starting to turn out really nice. looks really good. Uh, he, uh, he had the good idea of put, hinging them and making them collapsible so he could free up some space, and worked out pretty good. Ah, rain. That's, that's too bad. Hopefully it clears up for you guys. If you guys don't have to work tomorrow, hopefully you guys can get out and... Uh, fly a little bit. That's what I plan on doing tomorrow is flying all day if I can. So got some of the yard work and essentials done this morning and then went and worked on the trailer the rest of the day with our buddy. So it was a good day. Anyhow, we'll do a little bit of a roll call real quick. I see the chat kind of moving pretty quick. I'm going to get back up into it here. All right. So we've got C Mafia, what's up buddy, EQRC, Brian Chambers, TNRC Pilot, Don Shack, 3rd Day RC, there goes that darn alarm, the RC Air Marshal, our spider must be back, uh, Rage Tag, Boss223, Ken Sprouse, Wreck'em Roy, Pay It Forward, let's see, Pterodactyl, how's it going buddy, Matt M., Kevin, I don't want to chop up your last name, but how you doing, buddy? Uh, Brian Bursett. Holy smokes, tons of guys in here. Sorry if I missed anybody. I'm just kind of scrolling through here trying to get it dialed in. Raid, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had some. I thought I got him, you know. I didn't want to spray anything on the camera, but uh, apparently not. All right, there we go, getting right into it. Main flight on the PT-17 Stearman was perfect today, Bobby. Awesome, man, good to hear it. That's a good little flying plane. The big one's even better. Just wait until you guys get that dancing wing uh, PT-17 in your hands. That thing is bad to the bone. All right, so Meticulous AI, how you doing? Does the Gloucester Meteor have upgraded landing gear? Uh, yes, it does, actually. It comes with... Um, thought I had a box sitting here of them. Uh, but it comes, yeah, it comes with the version 2 upgraded retracts. I have not had any issues with any of the upgraded retracts in any of the other airplanes as well. Uh, they seem to perform pretty good. Um, I still hear guys having issues here and there with the Hellcat and the Corsair sometimes because I guess, you know, they have that rotating system. Uh, but other than that, every, everything else seems to be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, people chop up my last name, too, all the time. They, they always leave the K silent for some reason. Like, that's how I know if I'm getting, like, a spam call, because they always call me and say, Hi, is Mr. Mita there? And I'm like, nope, sure isn't. So. Spencer Keith, what's up, buddy? Mr. Ramsey, how you doing? Ah, 
Oh, it's a good idea, Air Marshal. Didn't even think about that. It said, turn off the infrared lights on the camera. The spiders will go away. Security cameras are kind of my jam. I didn't even think about that. <clears throat> awesome. So, anyhow. Who all is going to Jet Jam? I think a lot of you guys are uh, that I've been talking to. Jackson's RC Aviation. How you doing? Uh, but super pumped up. I, I'm getting excited. It's get, starting to get close. Getting crunch time. I have quite a few things to repair still. So I'll be working on planes most of the week this week and next weekend, I'm sure. Getting all ready. All of the jets ready anyways. So should be an awesome time. I actually still have to register. I keep forgetting to do that. I was going to do it last week and I'll probably have to, I'm probably going to do that tonight after I get out of, get out of here. So anyway, so I figured tonight we'd build something. I was walking through the warehouse and trying to figure out what to build. And I think there's something new with these BF 109s. I think they have flaps now. I'm not hundred percent positive. Uh, they change stuff quite often. So I figured we'd dig into one of these things and see if there's any upgrades and build it. So hopefully that's something that's kind of your guys' jam a little bit. <laughs> Pilot Ryan Media. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. I'm going to have to get on her about that. <laughs> yeah, Sea Mafia will be at uh, Jet Jam also. A lot of you guys I can't wait to meet. Um, and then some of you I can't wait to see again. Saw you at Imperial RC, and then also um, in previous past shows last year, like uh, Spencer Keese going. So can't wait to see all of you guys. Could be a good time. All right, RC Air Marshal. Yeah, we, we got a spot for you, buddy. Don't worry. We're always in our spot, too. So if you guys come to Jet Jam, if you guys want to come see us, like, there's like the main flight line and stuff. For some reason, it's just been like a tradition. Uh, me and my buddy Adam have been going to this for quite a long time now. Um, I think every year but one. The first year that they, they had it, we didn't go. But the second year we did, and we've been going ever since. And uh, for some reason, we park all the way at the end of the lot. Like That's, that's like our spot. So if you guys ever want to come see us, we're usually down there. You can see a bunch of tents set up and tons of planes. We usually bring a lot of jets with us. So come on down. <laughs> see my yeah it's gonna be a good time I'm, I'm getting pumped up i'm excited cannot wait uh but yeah i'll quit jabbering we'll get into this bf 109 here good old bf 109 i still have my my old girl bf 109 it's a good flying plane probably get a stand up in here <laughs> that's right air marshal Well, one new thing about this one, it's, it's missing a rudder. <laughs> that must be, so, I wonder if they hinged it this time. It almost looks like it. That'd be kind of cool. I like plastic hinges rather than foam. All right. Nice big battery compartment there. I've run anywhere from a 2200, like smash that 2200 all the way forward, um, to a 3300. You might have to do a little bit of carving. I know, I'm pretty sure I did to fit my 3300 in here, um, but not too much. All right, actually, I didn't even look at the motor to see if that's anything different on here. Okay, so they have the 600 kV motor on here. My, I think my old one had the 500 kV motor. Let's see what ESC. I can see it from the bottom here. Uh, 50 amp ESC. So 600 kV motor, 50 amp ESC. All 
right, get some of these boxes out of the way here. I've got into one of these. Decal sheet. And our goodies. <laughs> EQRC you said was the motor tight. Yeah, I think it was pretty tight when I moved it. Yeah, it's in there good. The only thing I actually don't see yet is the rudder. <laughs> Ah, we don't need that. Who needs a rudder? Especially on something that you have to use it like crazy to the ground handling. You don't need that. The finish on this is actually really good though. The more I keep looking at it, I mean the finish is absolutely beautiful on this thing. It's a lot better than previous I've seen. the rudder because I do not see it. Well, I'm going to have to run him back real quick. <laughs> That's true, pay it for He said, Bobby, who needs a rudder? Heck, you don't even need the ailerons. <laughs> Yeah, with this bird, it might be a little bit interesting not having uh, not having a rudder. This thing can be a handful on the ground sometimes, especially in a cross. Hmm. Should have been attached, but needed glue. Yeah, I don't see it. Actually. I think they forgot it. Because it is not on there. I'm going to run it in the back real quick. Uh, and see if I have a spare part. I'll be right back.
All right, sorry about that, guys. Found one. <laughs> it, uh, tore it out of a return package that we had. All right. It was already glued into the plane, but eh. All right, cool. So we have a rudder now, so that's good. All right, so let's get into the rest of this thing. I actually might get a different rudder. This one's pretty beat up. I got it out of a return package, but anyhow, we can do that at the end. Let's try and make sure everything else is here. I think it is. So I'm going to start with the wings because we have to glue the tail in, so I'll probably let, let that set up. And a little snorkel. On the other one too, if you want some more cooling up in here, um, I actually made this snorkel right here that's on the, well I call it a snorkel, but um, it goes right here like this. I actually cut some of this out so it could vent air inside of it, kind of scoop it in. It works pretty well the last time I did it. Uh, the rudder is actually hinged on on this on these BF 109s now, Air Marshal. No more foam hinge. Oop, sorry, just running back up in the comments, making sure I didn't miss anybody. sure everything else is good all right we'll start building her now I'm gonna do the wing first events this summer too so I'm, I'm getting excited now that all of the baloney is over with for the most part Nephi's coming up in August we'll, we will be at that one also that's a good one to go to if you guys haven't seen the uh, the AMA Air Museum it, it's pretty neat it's definitely something that you should see once at least and the AMA grounds is awesome to fly at it's huge Then I also, I know you guys probably uh, heard Ryan talking about it a little bit last night, but make sure you guys go check out that new uh, like app or website that's going on called RC Pilot. Um, I actually joined last night and made an account and stuff, and it's, it's pretty neat. There's quite a few things you can do on it, different uh, topics, discussions. Um, there's like a marketplace on it. It's, it's pretty cool. I was kind of snooping around on it last night, and... Uh, it's pretty interesting. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff and want to check it out, it's definitely something that's going to be pretty cool and hopefully a lot of you guys start using because I think it's going to benefit a lot of us uh, as far as questions go and new product announcements and everything. All right. So I'm going to speed the, speed the spaghetti through here. There's going to be two screws up front and then like a nylon bolt that goes in the back here with a little fitting.
Yeah, and all in fall. Yeah, we will probably be attending that most likely. There's a few other places down south I'd like to get to also. Uh, yeah, there is some YouTube on this plane. Actually, uh, on the Bitco Hobby YouTube channel, uh, there is a flight video of this also. Yeah, it's, it's actually a great flying plane. One of my favorites is actually the Hellcat. That's an awesome plane, too. If I can get these to line up right. Yeah, Air Bar, so the Hellcat does fly. Awesome, man. Sorry, I was trying to read the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. spinner on and stuff. Just looking for pliers. <laughs> Just have to remember to tighten that up all the way. RC Rollin, how you doing, buddy? Oops. Try to make sure I have that in the right spot. Things are pain, being a pain in the butt right now. Hmm. Wow, might help if I use the right screw too, I suppose. You should usually always wait to put your prop on last. Yes, I know. I know. Eddie K, how you doing, buddy? There it is, finally. All right. a little bit there. I love those spinners on those. All right, so get some of the gluing stuff done. Hey, this pilot actually doesn't look too bad. I need to put a little mustache on him though. Hey, Andy fits in the spot like perfectly. Cool, I'm glad they fixed that. Some of that on there. Get an 
nice and tacky. This glue is strong today. Holy smokes. All right. It's coming together. All right, there's that portion of it. Now, Get this tail section glued on. We'll wait a little bit and let it set up so I don't knock anything apart. <laughs> yeah, uh, Air Marshal put that G25 on his Hellcat. I guess it was a, a screamer while it lasted. <laughs> So I haven't had any issues when I upgrade to that G25 motor on these things. I use a, uh, I usually go to like a two blade prop, especially with something that has three blades. And I think Air Marshal was letting it rip with a stock three blader on there, probably pulling pretty hard on that motor. Brian Chambers, yes. Uh, Mid-July, we're hoping that container will be here with a lot of goodies on it and new goodies as well. So, yes, sir. Just enough RC. Hey, Bobby, do you know what version BF109 this is? Maybe E4 or F4? I personally, I do not. I don't think the box says either. Just says Mesher Smith BF109. I'm not sure what variant this one is, though. If anybody does know, please let them know in the chat what variant uh, BF109 this is. I think I went a little too excessive with the glue there. Holy smokes, it's gonna be everywhere. Jeez Louise. All right, I'm gonna quit messing with that because I'm gonna have it all over the place if I don't. All right. Air Marshal, that's a good question. You said if, it, if that's a measure Schmidt, wouldn't it be an ME109? That's what I usually call them. I'm not sure what the BF109 actually stands for, to be honest with you. Same with like the BF110. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know what the BF stands for, to be honest with you. Yeah, man, this is, a, this is a nice bird. It really is. It flies really well. And they're only like $199 for the plug-and-play. They're pretty decently priced. 
and I think it's one of the only ME 109s or BF 109s on the market right now. Uh, FMS had a really cool one for a while, but I don't I don't know if it's available anymore or not. Uh, but for the price, you can't beat this thing. Actually, I think I'm going to wait on the rudder and get a different one because this one's kind of boogered up from being in a return package. You would not believe the way some people return planes. It, uh, it would blow your mind, especially when they're brand new. They just, ah, <laughs> I'm sending it back. I don't care. So things get kind of beat up sometimes. Sorry, just trying to cast, catch up here real quick uh, on the chat a little bit. Anything I missed. Yeah, what C Mafia said as far as the BF thing goes. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> Ah, it makes sense there, Marshall. He said, I think that's the manufacturer. They had a couple different companies making the 109. So there was a BF 109 and an ME 109. Makes total sense. Have you guys ever seen an ME-109 in person? You know, we have one, it's like an Italian version or something. It's a really weird um, scheme on the one that's at the Calmo Zoo, Air Zoo by us. And they are extremely small. I was shocked how small that plane is. Really cool though, really, really cool looking. The gear are just fascinating too, if you look at one in person. Uh, BD Tessie, I'm not too sure, buddy. Um, I'm not too sure when those will go on sale. Uh, maybe when we get a, a container and some more stock, possibly. Um, good question. Mike Bird, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Have 42 folks in here on a late Sunday night. Thanks for joining in. Sorry we were late again. I've been kind of like going at like 10 o'clock most of the nights just because it's getting lighter out. And usually uh, Ryan and I and some of the other buddies, we're out of the field still flying and filming and all that kind of stuff. So I get back here late. Today was just kind of a late day because I wanted to finish kind of setting up this area to get it ready for the live stream. And then uh, we were building my buddy's trailer, some shelves and stuff in there. So pretty good day. Didn't get to get out and fly, unfortunately, but we're going to make a heck of a day of it tomorrow. I'm going to try to get home at a decent time tonight if I can. And I have a hard time sleeping. My brain just keeps going. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if I can get to bed at a decent time and get up early and get out to the, uh, to the field. But I'm hoping. So we're going to, for you boys going down to Jet Jam, I don't know when a lot of you guys are going, but we are going to be leaving early Wednesday morning. So hopefully be there around noon, 1 o'clock-ish on, on Wednesday. So cannot wait. Excited to see all of you. This is a lot closer than Florida. It's only about five hours instead of 20 hours or whatever it took us to get down there and back. So cannot wait. A little closer to home, so it should be great. And there's a lot of you guys coming from all over the place, so I do hope you guys all have a safe drive to the event and home. Uh, yeah, there's some crazy people out on the road. Nuts. Driving back and forth to Florida reminded me of my trucking days. It's like, holy smokes, there's a lot of crazies out here. BD Tennessee. So talking about the Detrim transmitters. Okay. So as far as Detrim go, um, I use them in some of our videos. Uh, but so 
yeah, I work for Bitco Hobby. I love our products for the most part. Um, I've always been a Futaba guy, and then actually I picked up a Spectrum years ago, and I never looked back. So I use Spectrum a lot just because I'm very familiar with it. Um, but sometimes I will use, like in our bind and play models and stuff, you'll see me with like a Gavin 6C or something like that. I use those. I like to, that one's pretty easy to use. Um, the DT9, I, I like the DT9, but there's some hiccups here and there with it. Um, so most of the time I, I do use Spectrum more than anything BD. Just being completely honest with you. I mean, I, I love this hobby just like you guys and everybody has their own brand or niche or whatever. So uh, me personally, I'm a, I'm a Spectrum guy. I love Spectrum stuff. Oh, awesome, George Watts. He said, I will probably be setting up Tuesday and bring some more stuff on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Air Marshal. <laughs> Awesome. CMOF said he's leaving whenever Spencer gets done with work. Uh, Fred Barron, uh, the, let's see, oh, the Hurricane, yeah, that, that does come with flaps, yep, it, they're all pre-installed servos and everything. Tuesday night, CMOF's leaving, all right, seven-hour drive. That's not too bad. Cool, cool. Yeah, you should leave Wednesday, Air Marshal. Are you driving or are you flying up, buddy? I uh, I know Dave's RC. He's I, at least last I knew he was flying into South Bend here, and then I think gonna ride with me down there. I'm not sure what what really is going on. Uh. I didn't know if you guys collabed or not yet. Yeah, Boss223 said, love my Hellcat. I love that plane too. I want a big one. Like big, like 80 inch, 2,000 millimeter or bigger or something. I like everything bigger though. It always flies better and fun. I like big balsa stuff too. Hopefully you guys will see some more big stuff coming from Dancing Wing in the future as well. There's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of cool stuff coming around these parts. Lots of cool stuff. Can't wait to see you guys get some of it in your hands and fly it and everything else. Yeah, John Graham, the Hellcat does rock. That that's like literally one of my favorites from Dynam. I I love the Hellcat. I actually have the one that we built the other week on the show sitting back here. I need to maiden it. Maybe tomorrow, actually, now that I'm thinking about throwing the truck. Uh, I love that plane. Uh, when me and Ryan first started hanging out, it was one of the planes that I'd have with me all the time. And I actually, I went through a couple of them. Uh, it was always with me. It was like my HSD 182. I'm usually not at the, out at the field without my 182. I love that thing. And, and the Hellcat sits near and dear to me as well. Jermaine Spencer, what's up, dude? How's it going, man? Yeah, RC Air Marshal, that new PT-17 is a dream, an absolute dream. I, I love it. It's, it's a pretty sweet plane. And hats off to Air Marshal for helping us with the power system on that. It's super efficient, has plenty of power. It is perfecto. And, and those will be in the container as well that's coming. So as soon as... Uh, as soon as we know they're on the rail on the way over to our warehouse, we will put up a pre-order on them so you guys can get first dibs at them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Air Marshal, hopefully we'll get the green light pretty soon. When As soon as the pre-order opens, we'll probably give the green light to you guys that do have them. Um... 
So that way you guys can, you know, have something to drive rather than nothing. All right. So yeah, I guess I can put some decals on this BF109 while we're sitting here waiting for glue to dry. I put way too much glue on that rudder though. I'm gonna have to like paint over it or something. It's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> now I have to remember where these decals go. That's what the box is for. All right. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> I feel like I should scream that way louder. Like, way louder. Like, get right up into the mic and scream, Kenny! All right. I'll try to put these decals on here and see how bad I can screw this up. All right. There's one. Burger Ken, yeah, <laughs> Burger Ken, I like that. <laughs> Fred Baron, Burger Ken. <laughs> I love the cheeseburger emojis popping up, that's great. I hope this rides out forever, I love that. There's going to be some apparel made, definitely. Cheeseburger Kenny. Cheeseburger Kenny, the official sponsor of the BitGo Burger. All right, there's two. <laughs> yeah, EQRC, I like water slides. A, a lot more than stickers me personally just because I think they look a lot better on the on the plane as far as the finish and everything but a lot of guys hate them too um, I've actually had customer service calls on questions on how to apply them so some people it's, it's harder for them than others so I think that's why a lot of them are sticker sheets that you see but yeah I do agree the the water slides look great Make sure I don't screw this up. Okay, it's right by the white line there. <laughs> Killer Plains, how you doing? He said, why exactly can't everybody else make decals like Dynam? I don't know, I'm sure they can. I think a lot of people use sticker sheets, actually, uh, as far as I know. I just know some people use uh, water slides on some, some models for some reason. But uh, we were just saying that the uh, water slides, I think personally, they look a little bit better when they're applied uh, rather than the stickers. They're kind of shiny a lot of times. On the, actually the Dancing Wing PT-17 though, those are stickers and they're flat and they look really good. It looks uh, pretty close to the Monaco. Marshall. <laughs> I sure hope not. Is 
If I end up with something like that, I'm definitely putting it in your plane just so it does disappear. Hey, hey, Air Marshal, come on, man. I, I had to do something there. I didn't want to take a decal sheet out of another box. <laughs> It was funny because no one else noticed it but you. Nobody else noticed it but you. I got away with it for a while until you said something. Yeah, the gloss stickers EQ, definitely. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the gloss stickers either. I, I'd like them to be, to be flat like the finish of the airplane, personally. One side. <laughs> Killer Plane said, uh, Love the water slides too. Ever see the Durafly decals? They actually caused two crashes on me, flapping around like an insane aileron. I bet, yeah, once, once those let loose. Michael Bear, how you doing, buddy? Oh, that makes sense there, Marshall. He said, uh, so on the Dynam planes, I take like uh, 800 grit sandpaper to the decals after I apply them, then spray the whole plane with satin clear coat. Looks beautiful. Yeah, I bet you that does look good. That's why, that's why you're... Yeah, because I saw your PT-17 hanging on the wall while we were there, and that thing looked actually really, really good. Uh, I thought you maybe you repainted it or something. Almost done with the decals here. Oops. Didn't put on my canopy good enough. I put it on the right line. The other one. Well, I didn't put the rudder on because I definitely would have just knocked it off on the ceiling there. There goes that stupid alarm again. All right. 
make sure I didn't kill it or uh, miss anything in the chat here. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, taping the decals down. <laughs> ah, Ira Miller. Yeah, you know what? That The HSD-182 is awesome. Um, as far as... Spare parts go. Yeah, that, that has been an issue, but I do believe HSD um, will have a container really, really soon here in the States. So you guys should see spare parts uh, coming back in stock finally for a lot of these planes here soon. Yeah, I wish I had more of an ETA on it for you guys, but I'd imagine pretty soon here, um, whenever their container comes... Um, Yeah, the spare, you guys will see spare parts. I know a few of you guys are waiting on like spinners and some other stuff for them. But luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had any mishaps with mine, so it's been all right. I'm just, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed on the video I had like my back wheel pants off. It's because I have Robarts sitting at home for that darn thing and have not had a chance to put them on yet. And I want to do it on the front too, but um, on the front I couldn't get like, the, the wheel pan off just because of the way it's seamed together from the factory. So I'm gonna have to take a uh, razor blade and like cut it down the middle to separate it and make it how I want. But yeah, like I had the big uh, E-Flight uh, Cessna 150 Carbon Z and I did the same thing to that. I took them off, put some big Robarts on it. I loved it. Yeah, Pay It Forward said, Ira Miller, HSD told him to check back in a few weeks. Yeah, that's what I figured. I, I'm pretty sure uh, they have a container coming real soon here. So a lot of those parts you guys are wanting are going to come back in stock here soon. Ah, Kevin, no, I, wa I wanted the brakes really bad. And when I ordered mine, um, I, I waited too long. Like, I literally had the brakes in my cart and everything. And then the next day when I went to hit the button... They were out of stock. I was like, oh, why'd I wait? So as soon as the brakes come, I, it's like completely unnecessary for that thing. I'm just going to do it more for of a cool factor more than anything. Like out in my field, we only have 280 feet and it, it's not an issue at all. It doesn't even need brakes. Uh, but I'm going to do it just for the heck of it. It's pretty neat too when you're rolling out just to be able to hit them. <laughs> Flying Fortress RC said, any tips on my maiden on my Dynam PT-17 steerman tomorrow? Um, yeah, just make sure you check CG. Um, it flies very good. It's pretty docile for the most part. Um, uh, I, I've heard of guys having to add a little bit of nose weight to that, even though that thing has 10 pounds of weight in that, in that darn radial there. Um, Make sure you check CG and, and use um, an appropriate battery for it. I know Pilot Ryan was using a four to five thousand um, 4S pack in his, and I use a 3300 and love it. So um, a lot of it's personal preference, but I, I thought the magic spot for me was a 3300 all the way forward. 3300 4S as far forward as you can get it. Um, I'm sure some of the other guys in the chat here uh, have a PT17, the Dynam one also. Um, so if you guys want to tune in, have any tips or anything like that for them, please feel free. <laughs> Fred Barron, <laughs> he bought a bunch of nose gear assemblies for the Carbon Z Cessna and haven't, haven't, didn't need any of them. Yeah, you know, I heard guys kind of complaining about when I first got mine years ago about the gear, nose gear, and I never had any issue with mine either. I don't know if they were just slamming them in real hard or what. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Air Marshal. He said, yeah, you can uh, pop the brakes, go full throttle, and then release them for stall takeoffs. So, yeah, you're right, man. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's power up and let her rip. Ah, Record Voice said, I'm flying the Dynam PT-17 right now, 3300 all the way forward. It's awesome. 
good to hear, man. That's that's my favorite battery in it also. Uh, once you get it to four and five thousands, I kind of thought it, it was a little bit heavier. Uh, flew heavier, obviously, but um, that 3300 all the way forward seems to be the magic spot. Yep, Michael Bear, that's, that's a great way to go, buddy. Yeah, he said... He always test flies nose heavy, then starts slowly taking it out. Works for him. Yeah, and you know what? That works for me too. I always default to nose heavy on on a maiden flight. I I always do. Um, you can always take some out if you need it. Uh, nose heavy planes fly. A tail heavy plane flies once. That's what I've always been told, and it's been very true. <laughs> I I had a, a old top flight Corsair back in the day, a big one, and that thing. Uh, I don't know why I could never get CG right on it. It it was a handful every time I flew it. It like it was it was crazy. So yeah, just make sure nose heavy is fine. But if you try to kind of pinpoint it and play with fire a little bit, you, you can get in trouble pretty quick. I, I've done that with 3D planes also, trying to get them to act how I want them to, and I keep bumping the battery back more and more and more, and then before you know it, you're in trouble. Yeah, so EQ, yeah, so Air Marshal said something about that too. Um, he was saying he can't figure out how to set the flaps, and um, Air Marshal said it's, uh, uh, he's talking about on the on the Gavin 8C, um, he's, and Air Marshal said it's because the flap channel is shared with the flight mode on the MSR-66 receiver makes him mad. That made me mad too, because uh, that that's one of the downfalls with me as far as Detrim goes, is, is the darn flaps switch is on your mode switch for your um, like kind of like safe technology that they have or your recovery button um, and the gyro so if you hit flaps you can have have the flaps on but if you hit it, it's going to change your modes and it ah oh, it, it I had a headache with mine as well um, yeah that can kind of be a pain in the butt Stay forward said I had an accident with my HSD 182 front spinner. It ejected during a run up. I thought I had the screw tight. Apparently not. Yeah, I've, I've been there, done that before. I've had a whole prop fly off before, actually, believe it or not. They can travel pretty far at full speed. <laughs> yeah, Michael Berry, that's a, it's crazy. Heck yeah, dudes. So I'm pretty pumped up for, uh... <laughs> Boss223 said he did the same thing with his 1.5 Mustang uh, spinner in flight. I didn't lose a spinner in flight, but I did lose my darn canopy to the alligators at Imperial RC. I was kind of bummed up, bummed out about that. I, uh, I went inverted. It was, like... It's myself, Rich Baker, Wesley, a bunch of us were flying Mustangs and stuff, and I flipped mine over, rolled mine over. I didn't even see it fall off. I don't really think anybody did. We all had to search for it, and uh, lo and behold, we got on a golf cart and like went around the whole perimeter, and there it was. It was floating in a pond, and there was no way I was swimming to get that thing. So I do need to order one of those before Nephi, actually, because that Mustang is one of my favorites. That 1.5... That thing is sweet. Ah, there you go, EQ. He said it sets automatically to a pretty good setting. I put flaps on top right switch and it puts the gyro on the top left. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Race Crew 22. Yep, 10 days till Jet Jam, buddy. I think all of us are getting pumped up that are going. And I'm sure a lot of you that can't make it, you will see a lot of media and stuff like that coming from that event, just like the Imperial RC show. Um, be a lot of YouTubers there, and probably a lot of Facebook Lives and all uh, YouTube Lives and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a good, good time.
All right. I am going to try to keep the show a little bit short tonight, just so I can get to bed at a decent time tonight and get up and go flying in the morning. <laughs> I have the trailer packed and ready to go, so that's that's I'm one step ahead than what I usually am. One step ahead. Sometimes it's hard too. I, I know a lot of you guys have a lot of planes in your hangar. And it is so hard sometimes to pick what ones you're going to take out. It's, it's a good problem to have, but man, you, when you want to take them all, you just need a bigger trailer. That's what I keep telling myself. Yeah, George Watts. He's looking forward to it too. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Rage Tag, he said, are you putting a, a G25 in that BF-109? I don't know. You know what? I never even thought about it, to be honest with you. It'd probably be a pretty good airframe for it. It's not a bad idea, actually. I like putting those G25 motors on absolutely everything now. I've I've had a blast with them. That, that GBY that I was flying down in Imperial, and I flew it a few times before that. And, uh, you know, I, I had an original plan. I ended up running out of time to do the full build that I wanted to on it. I was gonna put a 6S power system underneath that, an EDF unit um, underneath it, and didn't get around to it, but that thing flew so fast and so good, it, it, it was competing with the best of them out there. And that G25, and I put an 80 amp ESC on it with an EC5 connector, and I was running a uh, 4S3300 Gen Zace in that one too, and that thing was ripping. So, and I have uh, I have a G25 with a 60 amp ESC installed in the Dynam P47, and that thing's a pretty good ripper too. It's it's held up really good. Um, so yeah, this actually might be a good candidate for another one of those. <laughs> I love that motor and a lot of this stuff. It's it's nuts. Ah, awesome. Thanks, Michael Bear. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I, you know, um, a lot of shows, that there's some talking and stuff. I just like to kind of build stuff, and we can talk during the build. That's, I, I kind of just, usually I build stuff kind of fast, but I like to kind of take my time now and answer you guys' questions and chit-chat and everything else while we do it. So it's a pretty good time. I like doing this. Uh, I wish they had more models for me to build because we could do, like, two a night, but... Sometimes, like tonight, I'm going to try to get out here at somewhat of a decent time so I can wake up early, go to the flying field. But, uh, um, yeah, sometimes I'd love to do two planes. And when that next container comes in, we're going to have some awesome shows because there's a bunch of new product coming on it. And a lot of it I can't wait for you guys to see. And that new DW PT-17 we'll do. Um, when that comes in, that first week it comes in, I'll make sure that that weekend, um, for that weekend show, we'll, we'll kind of unbox it and build what we can. Um, the build took me about two nights, but that was me, you know, sitting around here with Ryan, chit-chatting, working as we go, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I think it can be built in a pretty timely manner, especially the new ones, you know, uh, the pre-production model we had. Um, we worked some things out and sent some recommendations to the factory and had them fix some things and do some things that's easier for um, the user to put together. So uh, once we get them, we'll go over that whole plane. I'll show you everything that we've done on it and changed um, from the original design, like from our pre-manufacturer or from our uh, samples that we have here. Um, and yeah, I, I just can't wait. You guys are going to love that plane. And there's some other cool stuff coming from Dancing Wing. And then there's some other things I can't talk about that are going to be coming too. So I cannot wait for that container. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, Kenny, you coming to Jet Jam, buddy? There's a lot of you guys coming to Jet Jam that I did not know were coming to Jet Jam. So I'm excited to see all of you guys. I can't wait to meet some of you guys that we haven't met yet. So, I hope my my goal is every every time there's a show I know about is to make sure that you guys know about it. So if you guys are close to the area, you guys can come out and fly with us, meet us, and 
I love hanging out with all you guys. It's it's awesome in here in the chat, being able to talk with all of you, but in person and everything else, it just makes it so much better. It's it's awesome being able to put um, uh, a face to your guys' name and, and make a friend. It's great. Ah, Jackson's RC Aviation. That's too bad, buddy. Maybe next year, man. Nephi's coming up in August. That's a good one to go to. You and Mason would really like that museum there as well. It's a great place to fly, and that museum's really cool. Victor said he's uploading his F-18 videos now. Check them out. Kenny! Kenny's back. Off of his phone and on the computer now. All right. <laughs> Boss223 said everyone thinks it's a Horizon plane. Uh, Kevin said, Bobby, is the new PT-17 a glueless build? It is not. You will have to use some epoxy um, in some of the areas, uh, like the tail section. Um, the way it's built, the rudder's going to slip inside of the elevator, and um, that will require... I use epoxy. I always use epoxy on those kind of joints. Um, so that will require some epoxy, and then there's um, just a couple little bits and pieces on the wing that are going to require some epoxy, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then CA, because uh, the hinges on the, on the back of the plane, you will just need to um, put the control surfaces on the back. But it, it's, it's actually really easy. The build is not hard at all. I built ours, the, the pre-production models I built with no manual. <laughs> and it wasn't too bad. So, so having a manual and uh, some of the setup as far as the build goes, we've changed a few things in there so to make it easier for you guys as far as the build goes. Um, so I'm excited to get the, the new ones when they come in the container, the finished product, because I, I think they're going to be great. Ah, Kenny said, not sure, working on it. $500 in gas and a trailer needs new tires to get that far. Drop that PayPal link, man. Let's get Kenny to Jet Jam. <laughs> yeah, pay it for it. Kenny, I understand. I spent a lot on field two when I could get it. Yeah, that was interesting uh, going to that show and back with that little gas shortage down there in the Georgia area and Carolina areas. That was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, Kevin said, is the production livery the same as the one you have? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the old Navy scheme. Uh, the production livery will be that same one. Um, there, there's a different color scheme that we possibly might do down the road also on it, but probably not. We, we've, the Navy scheme I, I absolutely love. Um, it's different. You don't see it too often either, and it's got a lot of great compliments at shows, which I was happy to see. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it, it will definitely be that Navy production scheme. Heck yeah, Wreckham Roy. Glad you're liking it, man. Dynam PT-17 Roxy said, two batteries and 15 more landings and 10 touch and goes. Awesome. Yeah, Race Crew 22, Nephi, August 27th to the 29th, National Electric Fly-In. Don't miss it. August 27th to the 29th. It's going to be an awesome, awesome show. I go every year. It's a, it's a great time. You can fly anything at that event, so as long as it's electric, obviously. Uh, so warbirds, sport planes, jets, you name it, you can fly it. Uh, we fly at night a ton, so, so bring your light-up planes. Uh, it is a good time. It's really relaxed, laid back. It is a great show. Mm. 
Yeah, 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 Kevin, that, that plane is super easy to see in the air. Um, it doesn't have any lights on it, and um, I think Ryan has a few videos that are obviously not out yet, um, but I fly that thing darn near at dark just because it's the that darn wing's so bright. Actually, I have the wing right here. You guys can see it if I can get around to it. Oh, my brace fell out of it, but... Yeah, you can see how bright it is. It's a super bright color. It's not hard to see by any means. And it's kind of like a uh, matte satin finish. So it looks really good, and so are the decals. So everything matches up really well. It, uh, I love it. It almost feels like a cloth. It's, it's a really cool, it's a, it's a really cool plane. I can't wait for a lot of you guys to see this thing in person. It's, it's awesome. I love it. Ah, George Watts said he can't go to fall. No, there's a turbine flying at his uh, his club that week. Uh, no, Kevin, it's not a fabric. It's like an ultra coat, um, but it looks like a fabric and feels like it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's an awesome finish. A lot of guys. Uh, when we debuted at the Imperial event, uh, they kept touching it. And they're like, man, it looks like cloth. It looks so cool. It, it, it's, it's pretty neat. The covering job on it is actually, actually really cool. All right. So what's going on, 1130, guys? I think we're going to wrap it up pretty quick here. So... I can get my fanny home and to bed so we can wake up and get some flying done. I am so excited to go flying. It was beautiful today and I missed it. Oh, but there's always tomorrow. Thank goodness. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, Michael Berry. He said, I can't travel to to any event because our awesome field is just 10 minutes away. Nothing wrong with that. I hope one day I can buy a piece of land and just walk right out my back door and fly. <laughs> That's my goal one of these days. Awesome, Sea Mafia. Anytime, man. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it. Awesome. Might be flying day here tomorrow, Michael Blair said. Thanks, John Graham. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to keep the show uh, going for as long as we can. I, I love doing this with you guys. Um, I know Ryan enjoys doing Saturdays every night with you guys also, and uh, Marshall's on Monday. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of all the YouTubers that go every day. There's something for you guys to watch every day, which is awesome. And even some days, like, uh, there's multiple guys going at different times, so you can always tune in and out of everybody's channels, or if there's something you miss, you can go back and watch it. It's it's great how um, YouTube and social media and all that is really expanding our hobby. And it's, I, I like it the most because it's brought a lot of us together. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, there, there's never been a way of us connecting like we can now. So that's another reason I really like doing this show. We can all talk, mingle, build some stuff, talk about airplanes. That's, that's my most favorite thing to do. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining in. I appreciate it. Thank you for your business. Thank you for clicking through everybody's affiliate links. Uh, they all really appreciate it. So, cannot wait for you guys to see what's coming, too. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for you guys to see some of this new stuff coming. So, hang in there. We'll, ha we'll have some more reveals and stuff coming up soon. I, I cannot wait for the month of July to get here. Cannot wait. Fourth of July is my favorite holiday, and there's new planes coming a few weeks after that. So th there's nothing wrong with that. Celebrate some America and some new airplanes. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think Air Marshal is going to be on tomorrow. Air Marshal, if you're in here, guys asking if you're going to be on. I, th I think he is. He usually doesn't miss a beat with, it, with his show.
Awesome. Thanks, Pay It Forward. Appreciate it, man. Now, the October, uh, George Watts said the October event is at Rosewood, Warren. I don't know what event that one is. David Martin Grath, how you doing, buddy? Sorry you're tuning in. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to go here in just a few minutes, but we'll stick around since you popped in the room. We'll, we'll stick around for just a couple more minutes. I don't want to leave you hanging. So the RC Air Marshal said, yes, he will be live tomorrow. What he's doing, who knows? <laughs> Boss223 says, I love the 1.5 Mustang. Always land with a sweat on my brow. Yeah, man, I, I love that one, too. That's a, that's a good one. That is a good one. I really, there's not too many of those E-Flight Mustangs I've met that have been bad, really. I've pretty much enjoyed most of them. Ah, Fall Jet Classic in, in Rosewood. That's right, I forgot about that one. I think they have a big uh, a big Warbird event down there, too, at, at some point during the uh, summer as well. I can't remember what it's called. I just remember seeing a flyer for it last year when we were down there. Looked like some really cool scale stuff, though, like some really intense builds. All right. All right, so it's 11.30. I think we're going to go ahead and bounce out of here, guys, so I can go and catch some Zs and go flying in the morning. I cannot wait. I hope a lot of you guys are going to be able to get out and fly tomorrow as well, or this whole weekend if that. I hope maybe some of you guys are even camping at the field. I, I used to love doing that. I haven't done that in a while, but um, we camp at our field every once in a while. We did last year a couple times, but so many events this year, it's kind of hard. But... Uh, yeah, hope all of you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Uh, thank you to all of our veterans and everybody serving. And, uh, yeah, can't wait. Thank you so much for joining in. Had quite a few guys in here. I know it's kind of late, but, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining in. And, oh, sorry, one more question. Let's see, what is it? You said, oh, Bobby, did you steal Ryan's canopy yet from his P-51? I sure was a bit sad I couldn't get yours back. Uh, no, I haven't yet. I did steal it for that big gaggle flight, though, of all the Focke-Wolfs and, uh, and P-51s. If you guys saw that, uh, that big gaggle flight down at Imperial RC, I was the Mustang with electrical tape around the canopy. I stole Ryan's. I wanted to make sure it didn't come off, so I electrical taped around my fuselage, and it worked. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Michael Bear said, I'm changing my life with RC Air Marshal tomorrow. I'll see you all then. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Amy is going to change his. <laughs> see, Mom. All right, I got to get out of here. You guys are too much. <laughs> all right, guys. So thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Um, that's the weekend before Jet Jam, so we will make sure to have a show, and I'm going to get all of you guys hyped up for Jet Jam, and yeah, I can't wait. So thanks again for tuning in, guys, and we will see you next time.